But in the meantime, let's go ahead. I'd like to thank the funders who provide support for Cochrane Canada and for the work that we do with the Cochrane Collaboration, namely the CIHR um, and the specific institutes that are listed there. I'd also like to thank PAHO. The Pan American or Health Organization provides us with the funding that we need and with this particular software, which allows us to provide these webinars free of charge. Um, and we really appreciate uh, the support that they give us for that. We're going to be discussing Blackboard Collaborate for, for moderators. And again, I'd like to offer our thanks to PAHO for their support. We're going to be going through this Illuminate webinar interface that you see here. Uh, we're going to go through each of the functions and each of the, uh, the different options that you have to help you present a, a really effective and dynamic webinar. So we've looked at where the microphone button is there over on the left. And that's the button you're going to use if you'd like to contribute something using your mic. And I think we've all demonstrated that we can use the, uh, the chat function today. One thing to note is please pay attention to who you're sending it to, whether you're sending it to a participant or whether you're sending it to the room as a whole. Because we're all moderators, today we can all see it. But that's not normally the case, so please do pay attention to that. For our audio window, only one person will be speaking at a time. Um, if you're not using your microphone, please put your microphone on, uh, on mute. And to Elizabeth, who's just joined us today. Elizabeth, um, for, the, for today's session, we're going to be having one person using the microphone at a time. So if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand using the blue hand and the green arrow. And I'll turn the microphone over to you. Um, and if you'd like to speak, you press the microphone button. Wait just a second for it to activate. And then you press that microphone button again to let go and turn to someone else. So who would like to try? Who will save my voice from dying today? Um, if anybody does have a working mic, if you could raise your hand just so that we know. And if you could send a quick message. I see a hand. Participant number six, I'm turning the microphone over to you for a moment. Hi, this is the Nova Scotia Cochrane Resource Center. Four of us here right now. Thank you ever so much to the folks in Nova Scotia. It's great that you're all joining us today. Thank you. And I see a couple of people are just typing in a message, so I'm just going to wait for those messages to come through. Thank you for being brave. I appreciate that, Nova Scotia. And we'll just wait a moment for Mona to finish her typing. Mona says she's, she'd like to try, but she's not 100% sure that her microphone works. Mona, feel free to go ahead. The microphone's yours. Um. OK, Mona's microphone is coming through really quietly. Um, so Mona, if you'd like to go through the audio setup again by going to Tools, Audio, and Audio Setup Wizard, you could try that again. Or do feel free to send in a, to send in a typed message there. OK, because everybody today has a moderator privilege, um, I see that somebody has gone to application sharing. Um, if you wouldn't mind, it would be great if you could close that. Um, normally, thank you, um, normally that wouldn't happen. So what we all just saw today, that application sharing, only the moderators would have the right to do that. So a participant wouldn't normally. Today, because we're all going to be moderators, I've given all of you the moderator privilege, so that's why we all saw that happening. So participants window, over on the left-hand side, um, you'll see the participants' names are shown here in alphabetical order, and speakers are in bold at the top of the list. Again, I've assigned moderator privileges to everybody today. Um, I'm just sending that over to Elizabeth and to Tamara now. 
So today we all have the same screen, which will be helpful because as a speaker, this is the screen that you're actually going to be seeing. So thank you for joining us, Tamara and Elizabeth. When you give your presentation, you may see that some people have chosen to write in participant number six, for example, or participant number one. The reason that they're using that is that they may want to be anonymous. I don't know why, but it's a choice that some people choose to make. So even if you know that somebody is a certain person, unless they've announced it publicly using the whiteboard or using the chat, um, please do refer to them as participant number six, just so that they can remain anonymous if they wish. When you do a webinar with Cochrane Canada, we will assign you this moderator privilege. Um, other speakers will be, uh, um, will be just participants, which means they'll actually have a slightly different screen than what we see. Today we're going through the moderator function, so that's why you'll have this. Um, you did all close that uh, recording pop-up box. Thank you very much. Um, and Laura, who introduced herself, said that she, she would I hadn't been aware that uh, putting in the real affiliation was an option. Um, no problem whatsoever. Um, I'm glad that you introduced yourself to the chat room so that we know uh, so that we know who you are. So that's why I keep referring to participant number six as the Nova Scotia team or Lara. So for this moderator's view, we're going to be going through some of these specific functions here at the top. We're going to go through the application sharing and some of the other tools. Over on the right hand side here, you can see uh, follow moderator. That means that what you see is whatever the moderator is doing. So because everybody has moderator privileges today, if somebody else on today's session chose to flip forward through the slides, we would all see that. Um, if you check off that box in a normal session, um, that would allow anybody to change, to, to change the slides. This is why we have follow moderator listed. I've already discussed raising your hand if you have a particular question. And if somebody has a question, um, I'd like to ask anybody, anybody to raise their hand just so that we can see what happens when you do that. Thank you very much, Tamara. So we can all see that blue bar where it says one of seven hands raised and everybody should have heard a beep. This is to indicate that, that somebody has a question. And thank you, Mona. So you'll see Tamara's came through first and Mona's came through second. So if you have a whole series of questions, you'll know who's to answer in which order. Um, to clear that flashing blue bar, just click on the blue bar itself. There we go. And it stops flashing for you. We've gone over some of the uh, some of the emoticons. Um, can you send me a uh, either a happy face or a disapproval, depending on whether you like today's weather wherever you are. If you like today's weather, send a happy face. If you don't like today's weather, send a boo. So I'm seeing some people in Ottawa are more optimistic than I am, and I really appreciate that. So participants can use these emoticons at any time during your presentation to say that they agree with something or that they disagree with something. And we also have a polling function. Right now, you'll see that it's set to either a yes or a no sort of poll. Um, <coughs> and Tamara's asked, how do you answer questions? Thanks for asking that, Tamara. So if you are the moderator, and you see that somebody has a question asked. What I usually say is something like, oh, I see that Tamara has her hand up. Tamara, I'd like to turn it over to you. And at that point, I would then release my audio and leave the microphone over to Tamara. Um, usually, people will raise their hands if they'd like to speak verbally. Otherwise, they would do as Tamara just did, and they would just send it through to the whiteboard. So usually when somebody raises their hand, that means they'd like to, to, uh, to have access to the microphone. So thanks for that question, Tamara. And moving on. So conducting a live poll. As I mentioned, right now, you have either yes or no options. There are a lot more options that you can have. You can have a choice of three options, four options, five options. And you can also make it so that um, you participants don't see each other's answers. 
you won't see the um, um, the answer in the window, only the button that was selected. I'm going to pause there just for a second because Mona's asked, if we give over the microphone to someone and they get confused and don't turn it off, how do we correct that? And that is important because that's, that's often a concern. If somebody forgets, it prevents the moderator from speaking. So usually what I would do is I would send a message to that participant in the speakers in the, uh, in the chat room and I would say something like, Mona, please remember to release your audio. Um, as the moderator, you should, have, uh, you should have the function so that you can speak on top of that person. So then you would just say, so and so, please release your audio. So thanks for that question, Mona. So going back to this polling function, we're going to do a quick poll. Okay? Um, we're going to publish the results to the whiteboard by clicking on this little, uh, the little bar chart you see there. Okay? Um, and we're going to do a, uh, do a multi-option poll. Let's take a look at that by asking, are you joining today's webinar with a refreshing beverage? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change those polling options so that we have multiple choices. And I've done that by going to Tools and then going to Polling and change my options to A, B, C, D. You should see A, B, C, D below the participant window now. So if you could all take a moment and just answer that with uh, what sort of beverage you have today. You see a few answers coming through. And what we're going to do is we're going to publish those results to the whiteboard. And we're going to see that there are a lot of people drinking tea, some water, and a couple of pe one person with no beverage today. So thanks for doing that. So you can see that, um, that, that doing this poll um, is a way to engage your participants. So if, for example, if you're doing a, uh, doing a presentation with a group on, say, the risk of bias, you might ask something like, how many people are familiar with Cochrane's risk of bias tool? And it gives your participants a, a chance to, to, to engage and to respond. You might ask something like, um, uh, which of the following methods would you use when you're extracting your data? So you can see that setting a poll up within your, um, within your session uh, avoids the one voice, um, one monotony sort of scenario. And I see a question from, uh, from the Nova Scotia group asking how you would handle this with a group because they have two waters and one tea. That's a very interesting question. I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that um, because usually with Illuminate it's one person who signs in per thing. Um, I will look into that answer and see if I can get back to you on that. Thanks, Nova Scotia. In the participants window, a couple of you uh, were using this uh, before today's session start. You can step away from the session momentarily, so I'm just going to step away for a sec, so you'll see it said, I'm now away. Um, and now I'm returning to the session, there we go. So that helps avoid a situation in which you keep asking somebody, so-and-so, 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 <laughs> and helps you to know who, uh, who's still engaged and participating. Permissions. These allow different people to access different functions during your session. Um, going from left to right, you'll see here at the top of these columns we have a microphone, then we have a webcam beside that, we have the chat room, we have the application sharing, and we have the whiteboard. The whiteboard being this, um, this central area here. Um, just for a moment, please take a look at the, um, at the top of these columns and you see where it says session manager and you'll see my name. Watch what happens as I'm typing in the chat room. Does everybody see how that's uh, how there's a speech bubble that changes color there? Can you send a happy face through if you all see that um, that speech bubble? Typing again, beautiful. Okay, thank you. So whenever somebody's using any of these functions, you'll see that it changes to orange behind them, and this is how you know when somebody's typing a question. So you could say something like. I see that Mona's typing in a question, so we're just going to give her a moment, uh, a moment to send that through. It helps you to judge the pacing of your webinar. Um, 
And I saw there was, there was a quick question from, uh, from James who's asked, how did we step away? So to step away, James, um, underneath the participants window, you'll see a little door with an arrow. It's immediately to the right-hand side of where we have the A, B, C, D, E. There you go. Mona said it. Um, so where we have A, B, C, D, E options, to the right of that, you'll see a door that says, and when you hover over it, it says step away from the session. So that's just to the right of A, B, C, D, E. Beautiful. Thank you very much. So we're going to keep going. Um, to, uh, to change these permissions, you just click on, the, uh, click on the top of each column. So if, for example, if, if somebody has um, forgotten to take their audio off, you can take away their permission by clicking the top of the column. Changes that, uh, that we usually make to help the session run more smoothly, um, we usually turn off the webcam to reduce uh, bandwidth. Um, you usually turn off the chat room, and the reason we turn off the chat room is that you don't have participants chatting to each other. Of course, they can still chat to the moderator, but this prevents them. Um, uh, we had an interesting situation on Monday where one participant said to another, oh, hi, so-and-so, and I very quickly told them, just so you know, everybody can see what you just uh, what you just typed, who's a moderator. So when, when you're signed in as a moderator, you'll be able to see everything. I'd like to take a moment to pause. I'm going to take a sip of tea and relieve my voice and ask, does anybody have any questions at this point? And we'll wait just a moment for you to, uh, for you to think about that or for you to type in any questions that you might have. Okay, if there are no questions, we're going to keep going. So for the chat room, um, as I've just mentioned, um, moderators see all of the messages no matter what the permission setting is. And you can always change this drop-down list. Um, for the participants, the participants can choose um, who they'd like to send to unless you block those chat room settings, which is what we usually do. It's important to, uh, if you're a moderator, please make sure that you're sending to the correct person. So if you click right here at this drop down, um, you can see that, uh, that there are different selections. So for example, I can send a message just to Elizabeth, or I can send a message just to Mona. Please make sure that you're responding to the right person, especially if you're dealing with technical issues. You only want to respond to the person who's been asking the question. So as I mentioned, we uh, generally restrict the, uh, <laughs> the chat room permissions. Um, and you might choose to open the chat room back up again for brainstorming. The whiteboard is the central area here. And this is where the PowerPoint's appearing. As you can see, we're, we're doing the slides. As a speaker with uh, Cochrane Canada, you'll be advancing your own slides during the session. The follow moderator for slides, we've already selected to make sure that everybody's following my slides rather than skipping through them. And to advance your slides, you use these functions to the left of your slide titles. They're similar to the DVD player, to go forward or to go back. If you'd like to skip a number of slides, you can use the drop down and, uh, and move forward there. OK, so because we're all moderators today, I see that somebody's uh, experimenting with that a little bit. Because we're all moderators, that means that we can all see what you're doing today. Um, usually, no worries, no worries, Mona. Um, this is because, that, because it is set so that everybody's a moderator. If you are a participant, you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so you don't need to worry about somebody doing that during the session that you're going to be presenting. So looking at advancing your slides, we've just reviewed that. And Mona's asked, how can she correct that? Because you're a moderator, um, there's no way to correct it. If, if everybody was a participant, they wouldn't be able to do that, so you wouldn't have to worry about that at all. One thing to keep in mind when you're preparing slides for your presentation, because I know that a number of you have, sli have uh, presentations coming up in the, next, in the next month or so. Um, 
all custom animation is lost. So if within your slide, if you have a, if you have a funny pop-up or you have a um, you have a funny cartoon or you have something like this um, that, that's an animated something, it's going to be gone. So that's why it's so important to uh, to know some of these illuminate functions. For example, when I'm clicking here to say advance your slides using, and I want to use a laser pointer, or if I say to you just a reminder that any custom animation is lost, and I click here to show you reminder with that exclamation mark, you need to add these sorts of animations in using Illuminate, because anything you have in PowerPoint will be gone. So what you've been seeing me use is this laser pointer. Over on the left-hand side here, you'll see a laser pointer wand. Can everybody take a... Uh, I'm asking for engagement this time. Um, can everybody click on that wand and feel free to just indicate something here on this slide? Anywhere that you'd like to uh, draw a point, emphasize something. And down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that you can change that laser pointer so that you have a happy face or so that you have a, uh, a star or an exclamation mark and so forth. To restore the mouse, to take all of those away, Click in the arrow in the top left-hand side there. There we go. When it comes to um, uploading your PowerPoint, the most important thing to remember is to close PowerPoint first. It seems counterintuitive, but Illuminate will not let you upload slides unless your PowerPoint is closed. So make sure you do that first. And then I usually follow the defaults. As a speaker with Cochrane Canada, um, we usually upload the slides are, um, for the speaker. So you would send it to me in advance, and I'd have them uploaded for you. However, if you're going to be a moderator, which I believe everybody today might want to be, um, you'll be uploading the slides for people. So you select a folder icon over here on the left-hand side, and then you go with the defaults. Usually, I would just go with, um, see where it says uh, after current screen here, and then replace screen. You can see that there. Usually, I just go replace screen. For the import option, it doesn't matter which one you select. Just so you know, for today's, I said the fastest import possible, and I think the quality is OK. Can everybody send a happy face if you're, if you're OK with today's quality? Okay, if you're uh, if you're not happy with the quality, you can indeed use the um, use the uh, best quality, which is right there. And I'd like to thank Sally for joining us today. Sally, welcome to today's session. Um, Sally, if you have anything that you uh, that you'd like to contribute, feel free to raise your hand using the blue hand raise with a uh, with a green question uh, green arrow there and I'll turn the microphone over to you. Otherwise, feel free to send a message using the, using the chat room function. Tamara sent through a question asking, can participants download the slides? No, they can't. Um, that's actually one of the questions that, um, that we usually ask our speakers, is whether or not, as moderators, we're allowed to distribute the slides. Most people say yes um, in a PDF form, um, but no, participants cannot download the slides from here. Thanks for your question, Tamara. And Sally, I'm just taking a second to give you moderator privileges so that, Sally, you'll be able to see um, what everybody else sees at the same time. So we're just finishing uh, how to upload your PowerPoint. Again, go with the default screen size. Um, whatever screen size pops up, you can go with that. One thing to keep in mind is the size of your PowerPoint. Um, typical PowerPoint presentation with, uh, with images and text and so forth might be two or three megs. If you go to best quality, that can be as large as seven megs. Illuminate does have a maximum size of 20 megs, so please keep that in mind um, when, you're, uh, when you're uploading your slides. Somebody asked me yesterday if you would be able to set, um, to, to upload multiple slides that you had more than 20, and we're still trying to find out the answer to that.
to keep your webinar engaging um, beyond asking people for happy faces and so forth, uh, you might choose to put in an icebreaker, an interactive component. And the one that I've put in here is our dream destination for a Cochrane Colloquium. Can everybody go to the laser pointer, which looks like a little wand? And when you click on that, if we go to this, um, to the flashing, the default button, the little red star, can you indicate on this map where your dream colloquium would be? If you could have a colloquium anywhere in the world, where would your colloquium be? And I'll give everybody a moment to think about that. I see a couple of us are in luck because it's in New Zealand this year. I see Australia. Oh, very interesting. I see the bottom of, uh, of South America. I see somebody wants to go to the West Coast. And there's somebody, I don't know how good my geography is, but I see that somebody wants to go to, uh, to Northern Europe, to Scandinavia. So this is a way that you can get participants to engage. Um, somebody is going to Mexico or the Caribbean. I like that really big star that we see in the bottom right there. Um, because New Zealand is where we're going, so we're in luck this year. So that's how you can get your participants uh, to engage in your session and, uh, and to be participating. So a quick two-second break for any questions. If anybody has a question, feel free to raise your hand or feel free to type through a message. I'll just give a moment. And if there are no questions so far, I see no questions. Beautiful. We'll continue. Um, actually, I'll just wait for the Nova Scotia folks. I see that they're writing in I uh, questions. So we'll just give them a second to finish typing that. And we'll give a moment for Tamara to finish typing her question through as well. So the Nova Scotia folks are asking, participants can also use the whiteboard as long as the permission is enabled in the participant's pane. OK. So the question, just to repeat that again, I'm going back up. Um, the question is, participants can also use the whiteboard as long as the permission is enabled in the participant's pane. That's correct, yes. And by using the whiteboard, we're talking about, for example, I'm going to use a different function, and I'm going to draw a circle on the screen. Here we go, around other tools. Yes, if you enable it, anybody can use any of these functions. So for example, they can type, I am adding some text here. And that's something that's very useful if you're asking people, for example, if you're doing a RevMan demonstration, you might want somebody to type in some numbers, OK? You might want somebody to circle something that they don't understand. Or it's really helpful, for example, to allow somebody to, um, um, to highlight something. So if, there, if you have a really complicated graph, for example, and, you want, um, and somebody wants to show you, they can say, this is the part right here that I'm, not confused, that I'm confused about. See, I don't understand this, um, this window and this help function. So that's really helpful for your, uh, for your participants to be able to use. So thank you, Nova Scotia folks. I hope that answered you. Um, can participants upload documents to discuss? I believe not as a participant. So thanks for that question, Tamara. I believe the answer is no, um, but I will confirm that for you, and I'll get back to you on that. Um, and yes, all participants can see um, what we've all just added there. So even if you weren't a moderator, <laughs> I'm guessing that's Mona with the artistic talent there. Um, even if that's um, even if they're just participants, yes, they would still be able to see everything that we're doing here. Does anybody have questions about it? About any of that? Um, about those particular functions at this point? Okay. So we're going to go through some of these other tools across the top that we see here. For example, application sharing. For somebody like Tamara, who's a uh, trial search coordinator, uh, Tamara might be interested, for example, in showing people how to use the Cochrane Library. So Tamara, this is what you would use. You would use the button right under Help here, where you see um, where our yellow arrow is pointed. That allows you to share other functions. You might also, for example, want to demonstrate RevMan, or um, Rx for Change, or healthevidence.ca, and so forth. 
So all of these functions can be shared and they'll appear here in the center in the whiteboard. As an example, here you can see that somebody's uh, been sharing the review manager. And again, you can ask participants to type right in so you can have a live hands-on demonstration if you'd like. Whatever uh, website or software you need, before I said close PowerPoint, close PowerPoint, close PowerPoint, here you need to have it open. So whatever software you're going to be using, um, please have that open in advance. Um, in terms of file transfer, Tamara, you asked if, uh, if participants could upload files. Um, again, I'm not sure about that. I'll find out for you. But as a moderator, you certainly can. And you do that by going to the top here and clicking on this folder and select your file. This is what you would use, for example, to send an evaluation form through. Or if you wanted to share a, um, uh, share a document that you wanted everybody to have open, this would also allow you to do that. Beside that, if you keep going, we have a, uh, a web tour option, which allows you to surf the internet with your participants. And beside that, we have a timer. Um, I usually use this timer to indicate how many minutes we have left to a session, especially if we're running a little bit late. For example, if I'm waiting for more participants to join, I might use the timer to indicate that we're going to be starting a little bit later. All Cochrane Canada webinars are recorded and they end up going on YouTube. We'll discuss that momentarily. Um, as a moderator, I believe you all saw that button that popped up and asked uh, if you wanted to start the recording. So you start the recording by clicking here on the start and then the stop at the end of your session. What happens with these recordings is that Luis Gabriel Cuervo at PAHO very kindly takes the audio recording that we have and uh, uh, casts that with the slides to produce a YouTube video. And these YouTube videos are posted online on the PAHO website. If you give me just a moment, I'll be back with you in a second. I'm sorry about that. Um, so as you can see, all of our videos are posted on the PAHO website. They're also posted on Cochrane Canada's website as well, person by person. I'm sorry, I fear I might end up losing my voice. Um, if you do a YouTube search for you thing in YouTube, you'll be able to find Sorry about that. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Um, I see that Mona's written in. If you forget to record it, does it automatically record? And the very unfortunate answer is no. Um, I forgot to record for our session with um, on logic models. And unfortunately, that means that we now have no recording of that session. Of course, you could always do a recording after the fact. But the problem with that is that um, uh, you lose any of the interactive components. So for example, if somebody else um, had taken the microphone over, um, you would lose their question. Now, one thing that you might choose to do that I often do is I copy everything that's in that chat room and I save it into Word. That allows me to see the questions that people ask at the end of the session. And that's a really good habit to get into because, as I've, <laughs> there have been a couple of times already when I've said something like, I'll get back to you on that. Or um, I'll have to find out the answer for you. Um, if you've copied all of that chat room into Word, it makes follow-up very, very easy. So that's a habit you'll want to get into. When we go back to the YouTube, um, one of the uh, benefits of having it on YouTube is that we can get all sorts of statistics about who's watching the videos, where they're watching it from, 
how many times people are hitting it, and so forth. Um, so if, as a speaker, if you'd like to get that information, just let us know and we'll help you retrieve that. <coughs> this is actually from, uh, from last year, from February 2011. And you can see that the YouTube hits are going up over time and that some of them are indeed proving to be quite popular. So I'd like to take a moment and pause and ask if there are any questions at this point. So Nova Scotia folks, um, can you go to Tools and then go to Polling and go to Yes, No Options? Beautiful. Okay. And can you go back again and change it to the five options, so the A to E? Beautiful. So as you see, it doesn't take very long to change those. Um, so unfortunately, you can't set them up in advance. However, they're very quick and easy to change. One thing that helps is to have, um, is to send your slides through to whoever's moderating your session. Um, because if you send it uh, through to them in advance, they'll know what sort of polls you have upcoming, so they'll be prepared for that. So it's time for a five minute break um, to, uh, <laughs> to give my voice a rest. And no, I didn't just put the slide in there for that. I swear to goodness. <laughs> but um, uh, let's take a five minute break because we do have some more material to go through. So I currently have 12.47 PM. We'll take a five minute break. And I'm going to set the timer by going to the tools at the top of our screen. And I'm going to set our timer for a five minute break there. And I'm going to have it play a sound for us and display a little message. Thank you to whoever set that for us more quickly. I appreciate that. So you'll see there's a five minute break there. We'll come back in five minutes. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for that quick break. So I'm just going to answer uh, one of the questions that, uh, that Tamara had had. This was regarding, um, regarding the survey and the poll results. One thing I'm not sure about is when Louis Gabrielle records, uh, takes the recording of the session, I'm not sure whether he uses the slides that we can see. So for example, Will they actually see me doing this dot, dot, dot that I'm doing right now? Or does it just take the slides that you uploaded? And that's what I'm not sure about. Um, because if he only takes the slides, your survey results wouldn't be contained within that. If, however, he takes the recording, then, then you would be fine. So I will actually ask him about that. Um, so thanks, Mona, for suggesting that might be a way to do it. Um, I will check with Liz Gabrielle and find out which he does so that we know whether your survey results are going to be saved. So thanks for that question, Tamara, and uh, thanks for, for, the, uh, for the suggestion, Mona. Were there any other questions at this point?
I'm just waiting for James to type in. Um, if you weren't reading along with the uh, with the chat room, um, there was a question from Sally Crow about um, about how often one should put in something interactive, and really, um, it's going to be up to you as a uh, as a moderator to decide how often you'd like to do that. Um, I tend to go by the feeling in the room. If people are not participating, if people are not using the microphone and they're not using the chat, um, I will throw in something interactive where all they have to do is click, because clicking is a lot easier and it's a um, it's an easy way to get people engaged. So please judge um, judge your judge your audience in the same way that you would judge a um, um, if you were giving a presentation. <coughs> And James is asking if you add new items to your slides during a session, pictures, ex et cetera, can those be saved? And again, that's something that I'm not sure about. Um, so I will have to ask that of Louis Gabriel. Um, if I go to File and I go to Save, it does appear, I see there um, that, that it looks like you can save your whiteboard by going to File, Save, and it says whiteboard, and when I click that, it says this, the current screen group or the current screen, so I would guess I would go to current screen group. So there we go. That appears to be the answer. Um, I'm not sure how one would open those again, because when, you go, when it uh, shows you what file type it is, um, you can actually you can save it as a PDF or you can save it as whiteboard file. So you might want to fiddle around with that um, and see what happens as you save different slide sets. You can also save your chat conversation by going to File, Save, Chat Conversation. Um, that saves it as a text file. And you can also save the participant list, um, which is really helpful when you have one of these, uh, one of the really big webinar sessions with 50 people and you want to, uh, you want to know who actually attended the session after they had registered. So James is saying that we could type in survey results and then save them. Absolutely, you could type them into the, uh, into the chat room and save them there. Um, and you may be able to save them uh, by going to that file save whiteboard. But let's try that function and let's see, let's see if, we can, um, if we can figure out how that works. So I'd like to switch over from some of the functions of Illuminate and go into, uh, go into webinar production with Cochrane Canada. Technical requirements, if you would like to run a session um, as a moderator, you're certainly going to need a microphone and you're going to need your speakers. One thing to keep in mind is that um, it's preferable to not be on wireless. It's preferable to use a speaker with them, um, to, to use a computer that's, that's plugged into the wall. It's more stable, which means your session is going to be more reliable and more smooth. It's also important to, uh, to test it in advance um, to make sure that you don't have proxy or file wa firewall issues um, testing in advance from the same location that you're going to be doing it. Um, participants, a microphone is very nice, um, but if they don't have a microphone, that's that's fine. Tamara's asked, when I say speakers, is it okay to use a headset? Absolutely, absolutely. That's what I'm using right now. Um, so speakers uh, could absolutely be a headset for your microphone too. Thanks, Tamara. So the overall process when you're doing a webinar um, is that about six months in advance, we're actually starting to plan out who's going to be speaking at different webinars. We try to launch our advertisements and the registration form at least six weeks before the first webinar in the series. Registration is launched. Registration can be as late as one or two days in advance. And sorry, I'm just going to move through to the slides that, uh, that we were going to. If you don't mind um, uh, not changing the slides, that'd be great. Thanks. Um, so looking at the, uh, at the overall process, um, the speaker orientation we do three weeks before, unless you attend a session such as this, um, in which case we can do a reminder immediately beforehand. And posting the webinar uh, is ongoing. 
um, as soon as uh, as soon as Louis Gabriel puts the recordings together, and he's so fast on that. Um, when our last recording, he had it up within a day, which is fantastic for people who've missed your session. Um, you can say it's it's already up. Yeah, that's I find that really impressive, um, and it's wonderful to have their support that that is so responsive. Um, in terms of the production schedule. This year we're doing things a little bit differently because we have a special series that Mona Nasser is coordinating and leading on priority setting. So thank you very much to Mona for the work that she's doing on that. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'd also like to send a, a quick thank you out to Sally as well for her contributions because she's going to be one of our upcoming speakers. So thank you so much for that to both of you. Um, so this year, we're doing it a little bit differently, so that early series is now going to be this priority setting series. <coughs> um, we're going to do a series from April to June, um, topics to be discussed. This summer, we're thinking hot times in Cochrane, hot topics for webinars. We're thinking doing something around, um, around things that are unusual or different or things that are really current in the collaboration. Um, so that's our summer plans. And then we do a late series uh, in the fall. That's usually launched in the middle of the summer. We do offer speaker orientation sessions. Um, we're trying to bring some of them together in sessions such as today where we can, um, we can speak with multiple people at one time. We do also offer orientation sessions immediately before the session or the week before um, to remind people of what they're doing or to introduce them to Illuminate if they haven't done it before. Um, I handle the technical details, so I'll handle the questions that people are having trouble with. Um, I'm happy to upload the slides. As I already mentioned, um, we can discuss polling options, and I'll arrange all of those polls for you as a speaker. As a moderator, you'll be offering those services um, to anybody who's doing speaking for you. Participant orientation. As participants, you all received this package already. Um, so you would have received a, um, a co the confirmation email that obviously gave you the link to join today's session. Um, the Canadian Cochrane Center is not able to provide technical support, so if you're having difficulty with your microphone, that's usually not something that, uh, that, that we can help with, I'm afraid. Okay, and the format of the webinar um, is that if we're running the session starting at 12 noon, I always log in at least half an hour in advance to offer assistance to anybody who needs it, who, um, who joins the session late or so forth. Um, I'm, there to, uh, I'm there to provide support early for people who might be having trouble with their audio. If they can set that up in advance, I'm there to provide support that I can't offer once the session actually starts running. We'll initiate a timer and we'll do a quick welcome, some of those welcome slides that you saw at the beginning, and then we go through your presentation. I usually monitor the chat room, um, so you'll find me looking at what sort of questions people are asking, and if they are technical questions, I'll be the one who's answering those for you. So what do I need from the speaker? Um, we've already had the question about uh, whether people can download the PowerPoint. Um, I'm happy to send it to anybody who'd like it. I just need, I just need it in advance, um, and, and if it's okay with you, whether or not I circulate that. Um, a picture and a bio. One important thing to consider is what sort of questions you'd like to have. The sort of style that I use is um, I, I'm okay with popcorn questions, and popcorn questions are questions like we've been doing, where if somebody has a question, I say, oh, I see that so-and-so has a question. Some people prefer to have questions at specific time points or at the end. And that depends on what style of presenter you are. Um, if you're somebody who has a particular flow to your presentation, if you're somebody who has a particular patter or who is reading from a script, you might not want popcorn questions that interrupt your flow or, or the pattern of your speech. On the other hand, 
if you're somebody who tends to uh, tends to run short sessions, or if you're somebody who um, who would rather do it ad hoc or um, ad lib, then you can allow popcorn questions to happen throughout. <coughs> As a moderator, I'd like to know whether you're going to be doing any polling or interactive components. Um, that helps me in terms of the technical details if anybody needs help with that. What sort of promotion would you like? What sort of promotion will you be doing? And how can we help with that? And then we'll talk about the recording. So if you're uploading the slides yourself, if you're going to be a moderator, we'll provide you with webinar intro slides. These are some basic slides that say thank you to PAHO that acknowledge our funders and supporters and talk about the, some of the basic functions of Illuminate. This means that you're going to upload the PowerPoint slides immediately after the biography in here. Some tips for webinars. OK. So what sort of blips can happen? Um, we've already had the question, what do you do if somebody forgets their audio, to let go of their audio? How would you handle that? What would you do if um, uh, you forgot to say follow the moderator and people started um, um, uploading presentations or started uh, adding things into your presentation? How would you handle those sorts of blips? In a group like today, it's handled very differently. It's handled very easily. But if you had a large group of 50 people, you might need to think through um, how you're going to handle that. I've mentioned already that uh, that you're missing this nonverbal communication. It's so important to be enthusiastic, um, to have these sorts of interactions, to have the happy faces, to ask people to use a laser pointer, to invite people to, to participate. Um, you can also ask for feedback. How are things going? Do people need a break? Um, would you like to take a pause? Do people have any questions? Um, so because people can't see you, you need to add a little something more to your webinar to keep people engaged and to avoid a sort of monotony. Um, you also want to avoid dead air. <coughs> um, so you might ask something like, if you're waiting for somebody to type in a question, you can say something like, we're just waiting for so-and-so to type in their question. In the meantime, how's everybody feeling today? Can you send a happy face if today's a good day? Y you know, you, you can say something like that just to avoid this dead air. Because if you have dead air, People think, is it still working? Am I disconnected? Is, it, 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 is the presentation still happening? Is there a problem? Um, dead air can make people really anxious, so try to avoid that at all costs. Um, and Mona's asked, uh, how long before the start of the webinar can we get online, log in to, to, to make a few tests and to test the PowerPoint and so forth? Uh, Mona, for any session that I'm moderating, um, I try to log in an hour in advance, but at least half an hour, at least half an hour. So for any of the sessions, Mona and Sally, um, that you're involved in in February, I will be on at least half an hour in advance to help you with slides. Uh, we can go over some of the logistics specifically for your session afterwards. The ideal length of the webinar, we usually run them for an hour, Tamara. Um, any longer than that, and you really do need a break. That's why I gave that five minute break so that people could just <laughs> get a brain and ear break from my voice. Um, usually we run them for an hour. I wouldn't go any longer than that. Um, people lose attention and people lose their voice. Um, so it becomes really difficult. So thank you for those questions. I'm just waiting for Sally. It looked like Sally was typing in a question. Maybe not. OK, um, then we'll continue. <coughs> a couple more tips. Um, illuminate every so often changes a little bit on the platform. So you might want to log in and make sure that um, um, the interface is the same. Um, Sally's saying that an hour seems like a long time. And you know, Sally, it, it really depends on, uh, on what sort of engagement you have and what sort, of, um, what sort of questions you're asking. For example, when I used to run our sessions for the equity methods group, I would do brainstorming sessions. I would ask people, for example, who are stakeholders? What sort of people would stakeholders be? 
and that's a way to draw the session out because it takes people a few minutes to type in a response, it takes them a few minutes to uh, realize they want a microphone and so forth. Um, so you can stretch it out that way. Don't worry about filling an hour, I'm sure it'll, it'll fly by, I'm sure. Um, so a couple of other things about, uh, about Illuminate. Um, I am indeed happy to moderate webinars for you. So if you're thinking of using Illuminate with your group, um, I'm happy to moderate the first one and show you how it's done and be there to provide technical support. If you'd like to run your own session as a moderator after that, you now have the skills to do so. Um, so you can feel free to do that. When it comes to technical support, you may or may not be able or willing to offer it to the people on the session. So for example, today's session, it's very small. So if Tamara said something like, my microphone's not working, I could say something like, oh, Tamara, have you checked this? I would be able to help her. In a session with 50 people, it's a little bit harder. Um, so you may choose to say at the beginning of your session something like, um, just to let you know, folks, um, I'm not going to be able to offer technical support. If you do have difficulties during the session, I'm happy to send you the slides afterwards and answer any questions you may have through email. So you might say something like that. <coughs> Um, and you can also get more help on Illuminate by going to the Illuminate.com website. You can find more training there and more information. Um, Mona's suggesting that one way you could fill time, if an hour seems like a long time to you, um, is to have more presenters, more facilitators. And if you change back and forth, every time you hear a new voice, it takes a moment. And it also helps relieve, uh, relieve that monotony for people. So it's actually a really good idea to have multiple presenters. So are there any questions at this point? I know we've been asking questions um, as we've gone along, but did anybody have anything that's come to their mind? No? OK. Then we'll continue. So we're down to the last part. And the good news is today everybody's going to have a gift of time because we are going to finish early, as I speak about filling an hour of time quite easily. Um, so the last part of today's session is talking about the use of the webinar room. Thank you, Tamara. Um, the, uh, the webinar room, this is the room that we're using today. So you can see up at the top of your screen it says Cochrane America's Virtual Room 2. Only one set of people can use this room at a time. Okay, and you obviously, you wouldn't want people signing in right now and saying, oh, I thought this was a session on whatever, whatever. You only want one group of people to be using it at a time. So we've set up a Google Calendar to keep a schedule to make sure that the room is booked appropriately. Um, Thursdays after 5, this is uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, Thursdays after 5 and Fridays all day are reserved for people to test. Um, just a quick question. Can I see a, uh, a show of happy faces if you logged in on Friday to test your connection? OK, so I see a couple people did. Brilliant. And, and, and some didn't. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people just sign in that morning. And that's why it's important to be on half an hour early. Um, but yeah, Fridays. All day long, it's, it's just for people to be testing their connection and trying out some of the functions. So as a speaker, do feel free on a Friday to use that, um, that login function and just, just try a few things. Feel free to test a few of these functions. Try, try using the laser pointer. Try using whatever, whatever you'd like. Um, feel free to test that on a Friday. Okay? Um, if you'd like to book the room, if you'd like to run your own webinar with Cochrane Canada, um, you do it using the Google Calendar. So if you could just email me with, with your dates and so forth, that would be fantastic. Um, Sally is asking, when you're testing, do you mean that you can upload some slides? Yes, you can, indeed. Um, so if you wanted to try uploading slides, you could do that on a Friday. Um, please do remember to leave the session. Um, and then your slides will disappear so that the next person won't see them. But yeah, you can try uploading your slides, absolutely. <coughs> um, we do only run one webinar per day. 
this is to allow for people coming in early, people staying in late, and so on and so forth. Um, the Nova Scotia group is asking, is the Google Calendar public or accessible so we can look at dates? Um, I can make it public. I can make it accessible for, for you in Nova Scotia. Um, absolutely. I can, I'll send you an invitation to join that calendar, um, and then you can see when the room is being booked. Um, and, and again, rather than just booking, uh, booking straight in, if you wouldn't mind just letting me know, then absolutely I can show you, uh, I can show you what the schedule is. Just a reminder, um, I think we've covered this already, but a reminder that, uh, that PAHO monitors the use of the room. Um, so everything that goes on here is seen by PAHO, so they know how many people are logging in, when they're logging in, and what sort of conversations are happening and so forth. Um, so that is all uh, information that PAHO gets. So Cochran webinars do go out under a standard banner. Um, we're happy to help with the advertising, so if you're running a session with us, we're happy to prepare a one-pager. We'll prepare the registration form. Um, we're happy to do that communication with participants. All of you should have received, um, well, you did. <laughs> All of you received the, uh, the notice from Catherine on how to log in and so forth. Um, so the central will take care of all of that. As a speaker, the only thing you need to worry about is your content. Now, if you decide to be a moderator um, and you'd like to run your own series of sessions, then the advertising registration will have to be negotiated, OK? Um, but as a speaker, all you need to worry about is the content. So in terms of uh, coordinating the activity with the center, um, you book the webinar date to the orientation sessions. Um, I'll just need the information about who's involved and a brief description. I will in turn send you the registration list. So Sally and Mona, both of you will get, for example, uh, for the sessions in February, I'll send you a registration list so that you can see how many people are signed up and who's coming to your session. That's actually really helpful when you're looking at the, uh, at the content of your, of your webinars um, because if, for example, you see that a lot of the participants are from, I don't know, the public health review group, you might choose to make some of your examples more tailored to public health. Um, so having that registration list can really help you to, uh, to, to tailor your presentation. <coughs> um, what we ask in, in return is that you let us know how many people actually showed up so we know um, how many people were there. And for example, with the Nova Scotia group, because I know there are, um, there are a few of you there, that's why it's so important for us to know, yes, there were three or five or however many people there. Apparently you ended up with four. Fantastic. Um, and I'll coordinate the evaluation feedback and the recording. Um, so your evaluation forms are, are something that we'll take care of. So Mona and Sally, again, you'll both get sets of evaluations. Sorry about that. I'm going to lose my voice again. I'll be back in just one moment. Sorry about that. So as I've mentioned, um, the use of this room is monitored and it is recorded. Um, it's not intended for personal use at all. Documents that we can offer you, if you're running your session, um, we can provide you with the orientation session, so how to use Illuminate in a short form. We can provide you with a webinar checklist, things you need to do if you're running a webinar. So if you're planning your own series, we can help you with um, when you need to do your advertising, when you need to, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll also provide you with those introductory slides that go over some of the basic functions of Illuminate. To exit your webinar, when the webinar is done, all you do is file, exit. And that's it. Uh, are there any questions from anybody in the room now? Just wait a moment. It doesn't look like it. <coughs> okay. Then so that about wraps up today's session. Um, I'd like to thank Adrienne Stevens for, uh, for allowing the use of her slides. Um, she was the education coordinator before me, so so much of this material has been prepared by Adrienne, developed by Adrienne, tested by Adrienne. I'd really like to acknowledge her support and her help in that. Thank you very much, Nova Scotia. 
Um, thank you very much to all of you for taking the time to uh, to join the session today. I'm really sorry about my voice and uh, cutting out, but I'm, I'm glad you stuck with me and stayed the course. Um, so thank you very much for joining. And one last function that we're going to go over is um, how to do this file sharing, OK? Because I'm about to send all of you an evaluation form. And if you could take a couple of moments um, to answer that and to send it back to me, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so here we go. In just a second, you should see the, uh, the form coming through. Um, you should see a server uploading. And um, if you can send that evaluation form back, I'd really appreciate it. So thank you so much for your time, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you coming and joining today's session. And if you do have any questions, um, I know there were a couple of things that I wasn't sure about, so I'll follow up with you, and uh, I'll send you those answers back. Thank you so much. Have a great day.